Hi, my name is Tiffany Lee, and this is Supernatural Body. In this video, I am going to be detailing my experiment, healing my vision naturally, supernaturally. I have been wearing glasses for 40 years. I'm now at negative five in my right eye and negative five seventy five excuse me, let me re rephrase that. Negative five seventy five in my right eye, negative five in my left eye, with the slight astigmatism in my left eye. My glasses are Coke bottle glasses. They've always been thick, but they get thicker and thicker every year since I first got glasses probably in the fourth grade. I remember distinctly the moment when my eyesight went bad. I was in class, sitting back towards the back of the room in math, which was irritating to me because as a daydreamer, I didn't keep up enough to get the basics and then they moved on quickly and I didn't have the foundation built up because I wasn't paying attention. And I was staring at the board, board, and I couldn't understand the concepts because I had missed previous steps. And my eyes just went out. It felt very much like a mental and physical loss of focus. But the problem was my eyes stayed out of focus after I left the class, when I went home, and told my mother what happened, who then took me to the eye doctor, who gave me glasses, who told me in no uncertain terms that my eyes did not go bad in that moment, no matter how much I insisted. He, he said that my eyes were gradually going bad and I just didn't notice it. I, have, I to this day, disagree with that. With that proclaimment, wrong word. And this is one of the many ways I disagree with modern medicine. This is one of the many examples I disagree with modern medicine, and certainly one of my earlier moments. Nonetheless, I was told by my mother that I had to have glasses. She was under this understanding from the mainstream culture that we lived in. And so from that moment forward in the fourth grade, I wore thick glasses for the next 40 years of my life. At this point, within this year, I uh, was asked by my very nice optometrist if I would like to go into bifocals because I certainly could. I'm now having trouble wearing my glasses for uh, long distance vision because I am nearsighted. And Um, then having to take them off for the phone, for reading my phone or reading up close. So what ends up happening is I end up looking over the top of my glasses or taking them off. Now, I've never liked my glasses, ever. From the minute I got them, they were so thick. I mean, no wonder puberty was such hell. No wonder my dating life has always been screwed. Yes, I would end up getting contacts, and not very long after that, as soon as it was allowable for children of a certain age to get contacts was the moment I was in contacts. But the damage to my self-esteem and to my socialization had already been done. Now, you know, 
hindsight is 2020. Perhaps I was shy and daydreaming in my own little world and, and everything would have been the same. But it was a major uh, focus in my own self-esteem was this lack of vision. I felt like I didn't deserve to be on the earth because um, if, if this was a thousand, if this was, you know, in evolution, I would not survive in the wild. So my self-esteem damage was great. But I wore them religiously every moment of every day. I was told that they would get better if I wore the glasses. Um, but then I got into contacts and wore those for many years. Until the contacts, as I got older, probably in my 30s, began to, it began to be difficult and they would dry out. So then I went back to my glasses. But after 30, get, hitting 30, after 30, it's like, I cared less about what people thought of me, and I had built my own career um, and survived my self-esteem, puberty, teenage issues. All that to say, this year I've been taking my glasses off a lot because of the phone, and once we went into with the arrival of the coronavirus and going into shelter in place and life kind of settles into a very quiet existence and everybody is communicating via video, um, I would take off my glasses and I was in a Zoom call without my glasses on and um, speaking in my appointment, and I noticed that I was having a lot of trouble bringing my focus, bringing my eyes into focus without my glasses on, on the camera that was the distance I am from here to you now. So three feet maybe. Um, it was a blur, I mean I could see shapes, but I certainly couldn't make out details in the face. And I was, I was alarmed at my inability to focus in this call. And I'm placing this observation here at this moment because what I'm about to detail is a spiritual synchronicity that happened that involved that that had to have the coronavirus that had to have this moment of me going out of focus that had to have all of these aspects in place for it to happen as it did when I decided to take off my glasses now by stand society standards I require my glasses I require them to drive um, at least So, for me to take, but society has fallen apart here in coronavirus. There is no society. Society is highly theoretical at this moment. And so, I took my glasses off. And, I, and my father had been talking my whole life about the Bates method. As I'd stumbled across the Bates method for healing your vision perfectly and coming and learning how to have perfect vision. As I stumbled into this method of how to see perfectly, I recall my father saying all of these um, theories to me my whole life. And I discounted them as untrue and insisted on my dumb glasses imposed by my societal structure. But 
But the theory of the Bates method is that glasses are bad for your vision and they further exacerbate your ability to focus. Bates had an office, a very busy office 100 years ago from um, early 1900s to maybe 1930 something. And it was a very busy office where the claims I, I'm reading in his assistant, later his wife, in her book, sh her claim is that no one was ever not healed in this office. Everyone that came into this office to see with perfect vision, eventually, if not immediately, usually immediately left with perfect vision. And there was no need to come back and, and back and forth and oh, oh, it went out again. No, once you, once you get the principles of how to see, you, you know how to see from that moment on. And they're simple exercises. They're all about relaxing because the theory is that for whatever reason, and everyone has a different reason, but for whatever reason, the, uh, the six muscles that surround the eye and pull focus at different planes get tight and strained in glasses in uh, in our modern society in school uh, uh, staring is terrible for your eyes which is what I find that I'm doing a lot when I'm falling out of focus is that daydreaming quality that I have is my inability to focus And as I started reading these principles and I took off my glasses immediately and that feeling of panic came over me that oh, I can't see, but I can't see. And once I settled, once I moved through that feeling of not being able to see, it left almost immediately. Not, it was not the feet, that panic of not being able to see once I decided I was not going to wear my glasses anymore. No matter what. Either I get the Bates method, God heals me, though I think it's both and they're connected, or I don't see clearly ever again. Whatever, whichever, I'm not wearing my glasses again. Once I got that through, the, through that anxiety that I can't see, but I can't see, that was lasted very quickly, then it's like I moved into my body. I came out of my mind and I moved into my body. And I realized as I was studying these concept, concepts that are largely based on relaxation, relaxing the eyes, and as I started doing these exercises, as I was relaxing my eyes, I was relaxing the rest of my body too. And I realized with with awe, in awe, that my inability to focus my eyes is reflected in my inability to focus mentally. I've been having uh, issues in my pro in, in several projects I've been working on, and I cannot navigate my way through these projects. The only way I've been able to navigate successfully through projects has actually been connecting straight into prayer and having God do it for me. And yet, I, I feel, I know I'm being given journal after journal, page after page after idea after idea. I have, I have very specific directions being downloaded into, into my brain by the same God that's leading me to be successful in these pockets of places where I'm successful in my life that I have to follow. But I cannot because my focus, I don't have a focus until I take my glasses off. And then my focus becomes crystal clear. Now everything is fuzzy. The first day, everything is highly fuzzy at first. But somehow, I know where everything is. I can find everything. I have to, I have to physically move my body around to get close to things to see them and lean down to the counter and maybe reach out my hands. But for, but for the most part, I'm finding everything that I need the first day. And it surprises me, by the end of the day, 
how, after that first moment of panic, how much I did not need my glasses. Over the second and the third day, I start wondering, is my vision getting better? I mean, it's still fuzzy, but it seems a lot clearer, or am I just acclimating to it? I still can't see the big E on the eye chart. Um, and I can't see faces. And I so want to see my daughter's face at every plane that she exists on. Part of this focus that inspires my release of my vision is in my piano lessons where I'm teaching my piano students not to look at their hands, not to look at the keyboard when they're playing their music. Their music is here in front of them and I watch them as they look down at the keyboard and then they look up and they have no idea where they are in the music. They're just nowhere and the music completely stops. It's a train wreck. It, it's become so common that I can hear, I don't even have to look at their eyes. I don't even have to, I can have my back turned and I can hear in the music when they're not look, when they are looking at the keyboard, when they are looking at their hands, when they're considering their hands and not reading the music and letting the hands do the work for them, the music comes to a, a dead standstill. And then I'm playing my own music, my music that I've composed, that has no sheet music in front of me because I've written, it was, came out of my, came out of me, so it's already in me. I, I don't need any, I mean, I may, I mark notes to remind me for later on, you know, after I've maybe walked away from a piece for a while, when I come back, I will remember, oh, it's these chords, and it will come back to me. But there is no sheet music to look at. But I still find myself looking at my hands. And so I wonder, well, if my students are looking at their hands and, it's, and they don't trust their hands, then perhaps I shouldn't look at my hands. And I do an experiment, and I look up, or I close my eyes, I do anything but not look at my hands while I'm playing piano. And it is amazing the difference. The ease with which I play when I'm not looking at my hands compared to the stumbling and the confusion as, my, as the signal from my eyes to my brain trying to push through to my hands contradicts the signal that is already in my hands because the music is already in my hands. The music is in me. And the signal going into my eyes and into my brain is a contradiction. It's confusing, it's two signals coming at once and it's too much happening in the body. Well, the same phenomenon begins to happen in my daily life with my fuzzy vision. It's like it puts me inside of my body. I'm no longer in my head or in my eyes. It's not about what I see, it's very much about within me. Everything becomes crystal clear. My thoughts aren't jumbled, the ADD doesn't happen where I'm heading one place then I head another and where am I, blah, 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 blah. Go back here, go back there. Everything becomes a direct route to where I was headed. Everything becomes effortless. All the tension begins to drop out of my body. Day by day, it increases this relaxation. I'm calmer in my relationships. Everything becomes easier. The third day in, I have this strange release of tension in my forehead and the very top, tip top of my head, right at the hairline. And it's a, an intense tingle, tingling everywhere. And I know it's related to the glasses and it's like uh, the muscles letting go. The day after that, I began to do some of the eye exercises where my eyes are closed and I'm tracing alphabet letters and I feel this tightness in the right side, the top right side of my right eye. 
there's a tightness and after I do the alphabet letters it goes away as I um, trace an A or B with my eyes closed. And so as I'm realizing that this life is within us, it's not outside of us. We aren't processing it externally in. We are a part of our environment. I begin to realize that visualization, which is one tool that keeps being mentioned in the Bates Method, which is the only one that doesn't make sense to me. I get palming the eyes, which is eyes are, some say, some people say closed, but I feel for me I need to leave them open with my palms over my eyes so that I can, because I have such trouble staring and letting the eyes go, so I'm working on active concentration. So I keep my eyes open and I palm them and the darkness lets the eyes relax and the iris is fully open so that when the light comes and they can contract, there's a full movement that the eyes rarely get because they do not necessarily get it when our eyes are closed when we're sleeping. It's something we've lost with light pollution, with the electricity that our ancestors had before us is total darkness. But I, I get sunning, and it's one of my favorite just to sit, lay in the sun, and close my eyes and let the heat relax my eyes, and it relaxes my whole entire body. And when I open my eyes, everything does look clear every time, and I wonder, am I getting, is this my imagination, or am I beginning to see this easily after 40 years of throwing my vision out? And all these exercises about relaxation make total sense. And perspective swinging the body and watching stationary furniture appear as if it moves because uh, you're gaining the periphery while you're working to actively concentrate in a central place of focus. I get all this stuff. But the memory slash imagination that they're asking me to do when I close my eyes and then open them again has made no sense until I realize that when we close our eyes and we imagine something in front of our face, how about you try it now, as long as you're not driving or operating heavy equipment, for the love of God. Close your eyes and imagine the letter A in front of you. Do your eyes move underneath your eyelids? They do. When you are looking at something with your eyes closed, even if it's in your imagination, your eyes are focusing on an, an imaginary picture in your head. And for me, who has been practicing visualization with extremely dramatic results for my whole life, visualization begins to make sense in that the eyes don't know the difference between real and imaginary. The eyes are working and focusing even when our eyes are closed and we are the ones creating the picture. And when I wondered if I should share this with everyone, before I've actually been able to see clearly, I'm walking around Walmart and every conversation I pass, the, the, my fellow customers are talking about their glasses and the power of their prescriptions. 
until finally I find myself in line at the self-checkout and I look up and I am staring at the vision center. Concurrently, via email, I am in an argument with Hubble contacts for contacts that didn't work, that they charged me for and I don't want. And I realize what I've been sent here to do. I have healed myself naturally from migraines. I have healed my hair, my skin. I have healed age spots off my face and hands. I have healed my money issues. There has so much, been so much in my life that I have used these supernatural techniques to heal myself. And so now I'm excited to share this journey with you to heal my vision supernaturally. I'd like to share a piece of scripture with you. This is Mark 8. 22. And he, Jesus, comes to Bethsaida, and they bring him a blind man, and beseech him that he might touch him. And taking hold of the hand of the blind man, he led him forth out of the village, and having spit upon his eyes, he laid his hands upon him, and asked him if he beheld anything. And having looked up, he said, I behold men, for I see them as trees walking. Then he laid his hands again upon his eyes, and he saw distinctly, and was restored, and saw all things clearly. And he sent him to his house, saying, Neither enter into the village, nor tell it to anyone in the village. That's from the Darby translation, which is a literal translation from a hundred years ago. Now, Jesus spit in his eyes. This man is fully blind, so he couldn't see anything. This man, uh, Jesus, spit in his eyes and then covered his, his eyes. He said he put his hands on him, but then uh, the second time he says he put his hands on him, his eyes again, meaning that the first time he put his hands on his eyes, he palmed him. He put, palm, he put his palms over his eyes. It's almost like a reset button, putting the palm over his eyes. But I thought it was interesting. Before this man after he gains some sense of vision, he says, I see the men walking as trees. So they're towering above him. Um, almost like a blur. And then he put his and then Jesus puts his palms over his eyes, or he puts his hands on his eyes again. And I keep thinking about this as I'm outside staring at the trees, which is the trees and the clouds are the things that right here at my house are the things that are farthest away from me that I'm using to gain far vision and practice and pulling my far vision. And these t trees tower over my head as the scripture runs through my head. And everyone discounts Christianity because healing doesn't exist, because science, even though Christianity has largely let go of the miracle a hundred, two hundred years ago. But my belief is that our body is the miracle. We have been divinely designed by God to heal ourselves. Our bodies heal themselves. And in fact, no doctor in the history of the world 
has ever healed anyone. The only thing a doctor has ever done has facilitated healing. Facilitated. Set a bone so that the, the body can heal itself. But for the most part, with the reliance, heavy reliance on prescription medicine, we are mired in side effects that are oftentimes worse than the cure. And John Hopkins did a study that put numbers for medical error deaths at uh, anywhere from 150,000 a year to 400,000 a year, making it would make that medical error the third largest cause of death after heart attack and cancer. Of course, this is not repeated in the mainstream media like Wikipedia or um, CDC. And people that proclaim natural methods of healing have been assassinated by these, by Big Pharma. Which is my hesitation to bring this information to you. But as the House of Representatives introduced a bill May 1st, 2020, amidst the coronavirus spectacle, numbered 6666, allowing government officials to enter homes without permission and take children from parents who have COVID, who test for COVID, even though the tests, uh, there's a high number of false positives, and it's a disease with a 99% survival rate. Wait, let me make that more clear. A 99.9% .9 survival rate. Without my glasses, I've realized I would have survived in the wild. Because really, if I need to see something up close, I can. I get close to it. Perhaps someone with 20-20 vision would have quicker instincts, but the one thing I don't see with my glasses off are the aspects of society, signs, letters, directions, the framework that society has us caged in is the thing that, that has disappeared in the coronavirus. And it's also the thing that doesn't exist when I take my glasses off. our birthrights in this life as told to us in the Bible are that we should be fruitful and multiply that we should have prosperity healing speaking in different tongues but more than anything and the thing that everyone argues over is that we should have freedom that is God's God has placed freedom at the heart of every individual. And the biggest issue, it seems to me, whenever anyone has issues with their faith or arguments with each other about Christianity, is this idea of sin and what did God allow and what does God create and why doesn't God just fix it for us? If you don't recognize that his greatest gift to us is freedom, then you will never understand his love for us. 
He wants us to come to him because we want to, not because we have to. This life, we have been imbued with freedom. It is a God-given right, not one granted by our government. Our government, thankfully, at least in the past and hopefully in the future, recognizes it as a God-given right. But this is not a right that anyone gives to you or I. It is our God-given right. And if we do not have freedom over our bodies, then we don't have freedom. Thank you for watching. This has been week one without glasses. I'd love you to follow my journey. Please like and subscribe for more videos. And I will put a link below where you can join me on my super secret channel if you're interested in more information. See you in the next video.